Eric Darling here with Darling Data for business enterprise. Put some more descriptors on my company name. Maybe that did maybe that fool people into buying more stuff from me. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Y'all buy plenty of stuff from me. You should still buy more, but I've already bought a decent chunk anyway. Uh, so this video. I want to talk a little bit about um, something that came up in recent conversation with a group of dear friends, and that is uh, error handling and uh, sort of connection scoping with uh, SP get app lock. Uh, because SP get app lock is a very, very underused um, feature of SQL Server that can solve a lot of a lot of problems for you, but need some sort of special uh, handling. So uh, when you use uh, SP, get app lock, SP get app lock, you have two options. Uh, you can use it <clears throat> like this, and I've, I've, I've shrunk myself down because there's a bit of text on the screen to begin with. I may, I may embiggen myself when, uh, when there's le fewer texts on the screen. So when you use SP get app lock, you can have the lock owner either be a transaction or you can have it be a session. Uh, there are good uses for both and there are good reasons for both. I think most commonly I see uh, people use, and by people use, I mean, mostly mean me, uh, use session because you either might, be, might not be operating in the context of a transaction uh, because when you use transaction, you have to, be in a transaction, right? You have to create a big begin transaction. Uh, so I end up using session mostly because either because A, there's no transaction to begin with, or B, uh, there might be multiple transactions. I don't mean nested transactions. I don't mean begin tran, blah, 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 begin tran, blah, blah, blah. I mean, like you might have, you might have different groups of queries nested into different transactions and you might, like you, for you would have to like recall um, SP get app lock for each one of them. Now there are totally valid use cases for that, but they're pretty rare and they're probably not worth covering in any great detail here. So I usually don't use SP get app lock like that, but it does have an upside and that is, and that is that when you use transaction, uh, then the app lock uh, either commits or rolls back with you. When you use session, that doesn't happen, and that can change how you do error handling with SP get app lock. Because if you don't handle errors correctly when you use session as the lock uh, lock owner, uh, you could have stuff get stuck for a really long time. Uh, so let's look at another thing that's interesting, and uh, that is that there are errors in the world. In SQL Server, well, not the whole world, the SQL Server's world, that are unaffected by try catch. Right? So these are errors that you can hit where you will not get to a try catch block. You will just either uh, return the error message up at a higher place or um, your session will be dead and you won't hit the try catch block. So that's cool too, right? So uh, the first one is uh, warnings or informational messages that have a severity of 10 or lower. We typically don't worry about those too, too much, do we? Uh, the other one is errors that have a severity of 20 or higher that stop the SQL Server database engine. Be careful of those severity 20 plus errors. Um, and then also things, I'm going to zoom down a little bit further there, uh, attentions. So like if you have a client, uh, like if you have a query timeout of like 30 seconds and you get a query attention, blah, 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 then that also won't get you to a try catch block. Uh, also, if you use a kill command, you will not get to a try catch block. Uh, there are some other, uh, again, sort of like higher level errors that will prevent you getting to a try catch block. Uh, compile errors, um, statement recompilation, object name resolution, that's what all that stuff says up there. And so those are also things that will uh, not, will like cause an error, but not the kind of error that a try catch block will try to catch. Or it, maybe it will try and it'll just drop the ball. I don't know. Uh, 
Could go either way on that, right? No, we'll have to we'll have to work on. We'll have to we'll have to have SQL Server shag some fly balls this spring. All right, so uh, we have this table, uh, cutely named Lock Me, and we're just going to start that thing from scratch. And we are going to stick one row into Lock Me, and it's going to have a value of zero, which is the only number that exists in every language. Not true. Demonstrably not true. No, not everyone calls it zero. Anyway, uh, you know what? There's a lot of dead space on the screen. Let's let's get Big Darling back here. That big dar. There we go. That enormous noggin taking up your screen. There we go. Punch the white space. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you what happens when uh, now we're now we're not going to be using. The, the sp get app lock we did up there. We're going to use sp get app lock and the lock owner is going to be session or session. Either way, right? Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to get a lock. Uh, we're going to update the table lock me and then we're going to simulate some crap happening for like 10 seconds and then we're going to throw an error. All right. And then after, we th after that error occurs, we're going to do this and we're gonna we're, well we we're not we're actually not gonna do this uh the store procedure is gonna go ka kaput right and notice there's no error handling here there's no try catch block right there's just a commit transaction which is the stupidest way to do anything in SQL Server if you're gonna start a transaction you should definitely have a catch block because who knows what'll screw up in there and you might have stuff that you need to clean up if something goes wrong. All right. And the second sort procedure is going to do nearly the exact same thing in the same stupid way with no error handling. Right. So let's create both of these just to make sure that, um, well, it's just to make sure, because I, I have two other versions of these a little bit further down, and uh, I need to show you what happens in different scenarios. So um, we're going we're gonna, to, rather than like quote, in and out a bunch of additional code. We're just going to create them as new procedures, each one. So um, in a couple new windows over here, I have this. And you'll notice that I have a specific release app lock call in both of these because uh, we, we're going to need it. And then over in this window, I have SP who is active. All right. So what we're going to do is run SP get app lock here. And well, SP get app lock one here and SP get app lock two here. And when we get and let's look at the let's look at the who is active. We have some blocking going on, right? And uh, what's cute right now is that we, we know that we had a 10 second wait for in there, but this this lock wait is just going up and up and up, right? We're at like 20 seconds now. This this one, the second query, is still in SP get app block two getting blocked, right? And this first one has thrown an error that says divide by zero error encountered. Now, it says the query completed with errors, but it's still holding on to locks. All right, so we need to run release get app lock here, which will allow this one to run, right? And if we run that again, we'll say, yeah, that doesn't exist. But if we run this one now, or rather, we, this one is able to run now, Right. We'll look at what this, what's happening is uh, well nothing. It it, it finally <laughs> it finally ran and failed like a, a millisecond before I got to who was active. So whatever. Uh, we hit this right, and now uh, we have a divide by zero error, and we have uh, we, well we're still going to have an open lock. Right. So we actually have to run this here too to release the app lock that that thing took. Okay. Not an ideal situation. <clears throat> Not an ideal situation at all. So let's go down a little bit further and let's look at some error handling. Let's look at the same store, two store procedures, but now there's some error handling, but we don't have the right kind of error handling. So if you remember what the documentation said, uh, if we used um, transaction here, then the rollback would take care of it. But if we don't, we don't have it, we don't use, a tra we don't use transaction here, then like, we still won't clean that up just with a rollback, okay? And like the, this store procedure is just a redo of SP get app block one, and there's one right below it that does the same thing with uh, SP get app block two. So we're going to do this. We're gonna create these procedures. 
and we're gonna run sp get app block one here and sp get app block two here, and we're gonna see the same thing happen, right? That wait for is gonna tick up to about 10 seconds, and at the 10 second mark, it's going to throw an error and not be there anymore. Uh, and now we're just stuck again, right? Because the rollback didn't roll back the app block. So even with error handling that does a rollback, like checks if there's a transaction and says, da-da, get out of here, roll yourself back, you bum, dirty bum, pay your bar tab. Uh, this thing still gets stuck because we don't actually do anything here. So same deal. If we uh, go away, SQL prompt. If we release this app block and now we have no app blocks left to, to have and to hold, uh, this one will get to about 10 seconds from whenever we killed that off. It'll get to that divide by zero error and then we'll still be stuck with a crappy app block. So let's release this one and let's go look at what you should be doing if you're using SP get app block, right? Which is you need to put your release lock here and here, all right? So let's go run this. and create both of these. And now, when we run this, and we run this, uh, this should get to about the 10 second mark. And remember, there's still gonna be blocking, right? We go look over here, there's still blocking. Uh, but now, that ran, but in the try catch block, we, sh we should have released the lock. And now, when this thing has gotten to about 10 seconds, um, well, it's, it's funny because now with the error handling, uh, because we have the try catch block, it actually says query executed successfully because we handled the error, right? We handled the error. We actually didn't surface the error or do anything. Uh, if, you saw, if you saw the query executed successfully in the last run, you wondered why, that's why. I should have stopped and said it then. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, because we put the error handling in there uh, and now we have uh, instead we, well, as well, right, in, in, in addition to, we have release app block here and we have release app block in the catch block. These things will have released their locks uh, in the error handling and we won't have, uh, we won't have uh, an app block to release here. All right, so if you're using uh, SP get app block for anything or you want to use it for anything, you think it is a cool new bright shiny and you're all this, even though it's like old as hell. <laughs> you see it's a cool new bright shiny and you want to use this uh, SQL Server feature. Just be mindful of a few things, uh, stuff that we talked about up at the top, uh, which is that um, you, you have two options for the lock owner. You can do session, which uh, does not uh, get rolled back then you have transaction, which does get rolled back, but you need like begin tran commit. You, like it needs to be in a transaction in order to use it. You can't just use it without the begin tran commit facilities. So uh, that's my advice. Um, be careful out there. Error handling is a, a difficult and often tedious task in SQL Server. And remember that there is a whole bunch of stuff. The, the, both of these links will be in the, in the show notes, but it's, just, it's not a show, it's just a video. Uh, both of these links will be in the, the YouTube um, additional information. But just keep in mind, uh, just be very careful with try catch because even with try catch, there are certain things that won't get you to a try catch block. Then you might need to be extra mindful of things going on around your SP get app blocking that might uh, prevent your try catch block from trying to catch anything. All right, cool. Uh, that about does it here. Thank you for watching. Uh, I missed you terribly. Uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you if you found a find this video useful at all, uh, feel free to g please give it a thumbs up. I beg of you. Uh, if I if I could get on my hands and knees and you could still see me on camera. I would, I would get on my hands and knees and beg you to like this video. I would also get on my hands and knees and beg you to subscribe to this channel. Think of the children. Uh, and I will see you in another video, in another time, in another place. So, cool. Uh, both Big Eric and Little Eric.
Thank you for watching. All right.